Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome everyone to this week's edition of Imperial as One's Belonging series, where we explore um, the experiences, the lived experiences of people from the Black, Asian and minority ethnic communities. And this week, it's a real pleasure to have Naira Chamberlain with us. Um, Naira Chamberlain is currently the president of the Institute of Mathematics and its application. Um, but he's so much more than that. So I'm gonna um, invite and, and welcome Naira to, uh, um, to the Belonging series and just kick off by asking um, him a little bit about his early upbringing and what it is that has given him his sense of belonging, his sense of identity. Okay, well, well, thank you very much indeed, Wade, for uh, uh, inviting me uh, to, for this interview. Uh, like I said, my name's uh, Nara Chamberlain. I'm a professional mathematician. I wear a number of different hats, you know, at the moment. You know, I'm the president of the Institute of Mathematics Application. I'm also a principal consultant at uh, the company SC Lavelin uh, Atkins. I'm also a mathematical communicator. And I also do a number of things for charities. So, but in terms of answering your, your question specifically about uh, identity, identity, you know, when I uh, was, you know, growing up, you know, you want to, you do want to see role models, you know, and heroes that, that look like yourselves, you know. Yeah. Uh, and one of the things that uh, I was finding as I was becoming more and more aware was that there wasn't that many black uh, black heroes or or positive black images. But but there was two images that that did uh, came ahead, you know, in my, while I was growing up. Was one was, let's say, the boxer Muhammad Ali, you know, mm -hmm. you know, the, um, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. I'm thinking, yeah, I can, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, but also and, uh, and something that which I yeah, was a, was of interest, which is more co connected to where I come from, because my parents are from uh, from Jamaica, from the West Indies. Yeah. It's actually the uh, the West Indies cricket team. Yeah. I mean, back in the in the day, you know, in the seventies and eighties, you know, and even in the sixties, but that was before my time. Yeah. You know, the West Indies team was the most dominant cricket team, um, <laughs> and, and it was so good actually to see a black team so passionate about their discipline yeah. and are so passionate and showing some excellence not only in terms of the coming out and out thinking the team out fighting the team out competing the team and it just bring you know and what i could say you know let's say for, especially for my dad it brought so much pride you know him yeah. just watching the, the west indies team and i'm thinking yes and you can see those bounces again yes <laughs> and then and then when you see when they came into bat it's like what this is such a cavalier fashion and you're thinking and it was just, um, it was for me, I mean, I suppose the, uh, the closest thing I can actually just relate to is, you know, a quite a lot, you know, um, much later when people see, let's say, Usain Bolt, and you just see how Usain Bolt would go around, you know, yeah. running 100 meters or 200 meters. I think that man has got focus, it's got passion, and it's got charisma. And then if you saw that, with, you know, what you had is like you had 11 members of a team all doing that, yeah. working together as a yeah. team yeah. and just going about the opposition, whoever they are. Around yeah. the world, oh, it was just amazing. And there was a time then they was just totally unbeaten in yeah. the West Indies. Any team that goes to the West Indies, they don't win. Yeah. And it's really And you know, to you know, actually to see that excellence, you know, that excellence mm -hmm. coming from the 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 countries that my parents originated from, that, yeah. that showed me so much. It gave me so much pride, you know, and gave me identity. Mm -hmm. So it was. So in terms of um, having the role models. They weren't necessarily role models of mathematics, but the role models was the, the excellence, the yeah. fact that they were the very best at the, what they were doing. It wasn't yeah. that they were the second or third, they were always at the top. So that what how did that engender your sense of identity, your sense of belonging? I mean, sense of belonging. I mean, thing is, one of the things that was probably was, unfortunately, society that, was was going this is trying to deem that you know you you know blackness was supposed to be equated to negativity blackness yeah. was supposed to be equated to some was it like substandard blackness was supposed to be equated to things which was unsuccessful yeah yeah and you kept on seeing this you know you kept on seeing it over and over again either watching the mm -hmm. tv and seeing the statistics or seeing the reports and you you never seen let's say um black people portrayed in a positive light mm -hmm. and and for me i said look i don't want to i do you know i, I don't want to believe this mm -hmm. but actually to see uh you know let's say the west indies team mm -hmm. you know playing with such 
excellence, such passion mm-hmm. and the outcome of them winning, you know, mm-hmm. you know, consistently winning, you know, mm-hmm. you're thinking, yes. And the, and the way that the whole world would talk about this saying, oh, you know, their team, they're, they're, you know, they're too fast, they're too aggressive, they're too this, they're too this, they're too that. It was it was just something that's an, is an amazing way you, you can say this is something a game that they did not invent, but it's a, it's a game that they perfected, the game that they, they and I was thinking and from that I was thinking well truly if they if if let's say the West Indies team can do that to cricket to a game that they didn't invent surely then then there's other fields that that if you are getting to if there's something that that I'm passionate about mm-hmm. and strive and strive and better myself and you know um you know I'm not saying I'm going to be the world's great but it's also that it gave us the belief that all doors are, are open. You know, mm-hmm. if you see something, you'd be passionate about it. And, let, and, that, and that's uh, and that's why that's what I got from the identity. And it was good to see there's a team that come from a region from where my parents came from, giving that that that, that message. So the fact that your parents were now in the UK, but it was part. It was almost like being transported back to back home, as it were. You yeah, were being yeah. just by the the mere fact that the team was doing so well and demonstrating excellence what about when you were in school then in terms of um what was the reaction because i can just imagine in the playground and in the classroom what was kind of like the reactions which you would get from other students um because clearly you must have been good at maths right so what, what was the kind of reactions that you were receiving um, early in those days, I mean, okay, I mean, in early in those days, yes, I was, you know, you know, I was uh, the everybody. You know, I'm seen to be the okay kid, all fine. You know, some of them mm-hmm. they get, get you know uh, get on with, mm-hmm. but I mean, and, and I do know that you know there are certain friends of mine that were white. Yeah, there was cool with me, but what happened was it's like when I started to all of a sudden starting getting becoming top of the class or let's say there was a, one of them who was the who was the best math who was the best mathematician and there's a test that came along and and I, I got a higher score and then all of a sudden you're hearing all this uh racial jokes or racial states statements going for in my direction for, you know thinking I, what you know why would you you know why would you yeah. do that you know yeah. and it just shows Almost like something that that was, you know, yeah. I'm your friend as long as as long as you don't be be better. You do better than me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so as yeah. long as they're on top, we're friends. But as soon yeah. as you get on top, then then racial slurs and stuff yeah. came about. Uh, and, you, and you only have to, you know, only you only have to get get a better score than than them once, and then you hear it and you think it. You know, come on now. You know, what's what's the why are you doing this? You, you mm-hmm. did, why are you doing this? You know, mm-hmm. I'm okay as long as you're getting better scores than me. But the moment I catch, match, and surpass only once, hello, I I see your true feelings, your true nature, mm. which was um, you know, I, you know, was very um, let's say very very disappointed because mathematics was let's say mathematics then was my strongest subject, yeah. and and as I started pursuing it and starting getting better at it you just see that those friends that that you regarded as friends you know when they started mm-hmm. um coming up with those uh you know racial statements i mean it was again let's like say that was disappointment so but hey you know you got to keep on moving forward you know you know mm-hmm. I'm, not, I'm not i'm not there to be a people's a people's pleaser i'm there to be the best mathematician i can be yeah fantastic so it was fairly early that you you, you developed your passion for mathematics um so (coughs) what encouragement did you get from from the school from your parents in terms of nurturing this talent because you can have talent and if it's not nurtured it can just die away so how how did you develop the talent which you had for math well i mean okay was you know with me um you know at, at the time uh, you know, between nine and, and thirteen, mm-hmm. uh, my my sister she was struggling at mathematics, mm-hmm. and my parents just, you know regarded mathematics as an important subject. So they thought, well, what we're going to do is that we're going to bring in a teacher to give her private lessons. Then my dad said, well, actually, um, you know, it's not fair that uh, my sister, who's three years older than me, um, you know, she she goes on and excels at mathematics, and I'm did you know, I'm there. Mm-hmm. So they so they so they so they arranged for this teacher not only to teach 
my sister, but mm-hmm. also to teach me. And right. so what, what happened was, is so I'd, I'd finish my, my, my stuff quick. And I, I think the teacher would, would just give me uh, my sister's uh, questions. So I was all of a sudden, I was doing questions three years ahead of my time. Do yeah. you know what I mean? And, yeah. uh, and then all of a sudden I got this, this whole idea of, if you're doing an exam, if you are attacking questions harder than than exams, then guess what? You're ready for the exam because That's even right. if that even if that exam is hard, you can battle your way through it. If the yeah. exam is easy, you destroy it. You know yeah. this whole, yeah. whole idea, and you know this this whole you know you don't know, doing questions. You know, free, you know, so I was doing mathematics three years ahead of my time, and and, yeah. and that was just you know th- that was fun. But in terms of school, you know, when mm-hmm. I was let's say around about. 15 you know and I went to the, the career teacher and said oh I like to do a career that involves you know say mathematics and logic I didn't realize that you could really be a mathematician yeah. you know he said this to me he said well uh, somebody of your draw line you should become a boxer I thought a boxer and he said you should become a boxer and so I went back to my parents and I said mom dad because you know because you know age 15 16 you put teachers up there you put yeah. you, <laughs> yeah. you know? yeah. and um and I said to the um I said to my parents I said look uh, you know, said to my dad, dad, um, the teacher thinks that I should become a boxer. And my dad said this to me, Naira, I said, yes, dad, you don't need anybody's permission to be a great mathematician. I said, uh, okay. And, so, and I said, yeah, listen, you don't need anybody's permission to be a great mathematician. And being, you know, 15, 16, you're only at that age where you only half believe your parents. You tend to listen to your teachers more, but half believing parents I decided just to go on but certainly with that motto um um you know with that motto a something that I um I've lived by and so you know when I go to schools or do talks it's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a statement that I say over and over again you don't need anybody's permission to be a, a to be a great mathematician I love that someone put in the chat we need to put that on a t-shirt and I agree with them. <laughs> we need to have that embroidered on a t-shirt you don't have to be you don't need anyone's permission to be a great mathematician I think that's that's excellent my you know what when you said what you said um with regards to the careers teachers assessment they took a look one look at you and made an assessment that you should be a boxer not looking at the grades, not looking at anything else. Did you, can I just explore that a little bit more? Did you ask them what I can do with a mathematic, with mathematics? Well, I, you know, because then said, look, um, you know, what would you want to be when you grow up? I said, mm-hmm. I'm into mathematics and logic. You know, I want to explore mm-hmm. things like that. That was a question I was asking the question. What yeah. came back was because of your jawline, your line. but you know, you meant more, more than that. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know? yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know you should be called a a boxer and i'm thinking a boxer and then the you know i didn't i, I had no comeback um you know because we're, we're talking about role models you know yeah. uh, at the time they i didn't have no role models that were black mathematicians i didn't yeah. know anything about black mathematicians i didn't yeah. know that at the time Catherine johnson um you know the one that got depicted in hidden figures yeah while I was at school, she was still at NASA being a black mathematician, you know, That's helping right. send rockets up into space. Yeah. You know, they were black mathematicians that worked for NASA. I like rockets. I was into NASA. I, I <laughs> love my toys were NASA. And you know, I like, you know, flying things into space. But I didn't know that there was any black mathematicians working for, for NASA. So yeah. henceforth, I did not have that information. I didn't have that knowledge. I went in and then the career teacher says this to me, he says, you should become a boxer. And you know, I I report I said that to my parents. Now, if I didn't say that to my to my dad, and my dad didn't say what he said to me, what would have come of me? You know, would I have taken on a board and saying, be a boxer? And then, and even if I let's say I decided to be a boxer, I mean, what what would have happened? I would have been in the time around of the the Mike Tyson and Lex Lewis uh, uh, era, so I wouldn't have got that far. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know how good a boxer you could have been. I don't know, right? You had some. You had some good role models in terms of Muhammad Ali at the same time. So you don't know. But I understand um, that whole concept of almost um, being labelled. So society putting labels on you, uh, and based on, in this case, based on a, a stereotype, yeah. right? Um, not looking at what it was that you could achieve based on what you were good at, just making an out and out assumption. Yeah. Um, that, um, I, I, 
I know you went and told your dad, what was your next move? Because uh, what came of that after that discussion? Well, I decided, well, like I said, only half believe my, only half believe my, my, my dad. Uh, mm -hmm. So, but I decided, yeah, yes, yeah, so let's go on and do my GCSE, go on and do my A-levels, mm -hmm. go on and do, do, a, um, do a mathematics degree. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, um, and I just kept on pursuing math, you know, math, uh, mathematics, but I was very much what was known as a mathematical fan rather mm -hmm. than a mathematician. Now, using, let's say, the analogy of, a football fan, you know, a football mm -hmm. fan will go to a football stadium and mm -hmm. watch all these brilliant footballers doing what they're doing on the football pitch and going, mm -hmm. yeah, did I mean, I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. I saw, but in the back of my mind, I go, oh, I wish I could do that. I wish I could yeah. be number nine for, for whatever team you support. Yeah. And um, so so with me, I, I loved going to mathematical conferences and seeing all these mathematicians doing all these crazy things on the blackboard or on the whiteboard. <laughs> I go, yes, according to this conjecture, this high facet, and I was going, whoa yeah and i'm thinking oh i love to do that and i read it and i'm thinking and i used to go into libraries and mass, you know university libraries and look at these math books and see all these math papers and all these crazy equations and i'm thinking wow i wish i could do that <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> that, that, that was me that was me no, i'm gonna just kind of i love that concept of being able to I, i've seen it on the tv where you see the professor up there and and doing all of the conjunctions and whatever else <clears throat> I suppose one of the questions that kind of like stems from that was the fact that you said at the time, rightly so, you had Katherine Johnson um, in NASA doing great things, put in, helping to put um, the, the astronauts on the moon, etc. When you were at university, did you see any um, black um, lecturers doing um mathematics how many other black black students were there in your class doing mathematics um when i was um when i was in my first year of my mathematics yeah. degree i was the only one yeah i was the only one i, I knew that uh, in the second year uh, mm -hmm. as a second year mathematics there was one right know? and i thought okay and I was always, I was always the only one, you know, when I first year, second year, you know, uh, uh, finally, I, uh, and I think the, sorry, in the second year, there was two because one transferred from another degree. Right. And student, yeah. And then, you know, come, come by uh, masters again, I was thinking I was two. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of lecturers, was there any lecturers that were black? No, I have never, uh, in all of my math degrees and my masters, I've never had a black mathematical lecture. Never. Wow. Wow. How does that make you feel? I mean, I, I mean, at the time, uh, I think at the time I was just so focused on, you know, I was just, I was passionate about mathematics. Did you know what <laughs> I mean? Even <laughs> though I didn't believe that. I could go, I could be a mathematician. Mm -hmm. It was, it was what, you know, I was studying, I was studying like a, like a hobby. So, you yeah. know, I was focusing yeah. on, on the, on the, on the math, on the mathematics, and, you know, the, the, the statistics, you know, when I'm looking at the statistics or when they're saying who the lectures are, or even when you look at the, um, uh, when they show you, oh, here's a list of all the great mathematicians and you see them, they're all like saying, wait, 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 <laughs> wait, 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 you know, yeah. at the time, you know, it doesn't, um, it doesn't. Uh, um, it didn't really affect me actually studying mathematics. The time it starts to affect me is when you go up to you know you go to a conference and you see a le lecturer or, 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 or a speaker and you go up to them and say, "Hello, that was a real good talk. Do you mind if I ask you a question?" And they're looking at you thinking, "Who are you?" <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Or, or let's say, for instance, you know, when I was starting my, um, um, my, um, uh, you know, starting my career, and and then you see some 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 person they're doing all this, they created this mathematical algorithm or the software, and you're thinking, wow, and you go up to them and say, hello, that's really really good, and they're looking at you thinking, who? It's like, yeah, how how dare you speak yeah. to me about mathematics? Yeah, <laughs> you know, what I mean? yeah, and then that's then it's, it was then when when I started to realize that actually. You know, I remember just like I was asking asking another question and saying, 
uh, and in, they, you could actually see almost that that uh, that divide, you know, where they're saying, "I'm not allowed to ask questions." I'm not, uh, you know, how am I going to grow? I wasn't allowed to to on the local level uh, collaborate or speak mm. or, or or find out information. Then I could actually see when I could see other students or other people, you know, going and kind of have that conversation and. Uh, and the, you know you can the, the, you know and it's like you're in the lecture theater. You put up the hand, and then you see the people pulling their faces. How dare he <laughs> pull up his hand? <laughs> How dare he ask? Yeah. Did, did I, did I mean? And, I, and you know, for that, you know, I realize when you know I was beginning to, to you know, and re- that's when you realize it. Thinking, wait a minute. Uh, you know, guess what? There's not that many black mathematicians in the room. There are yeah. none of black lecturers. And guess what? The, the the community do not like me asking, asking questions. questions. They did not me asking questions. I can't go up to them and say, I can't even go up to them and say, wow, that was a fantastic talk. And that's, you know, uh, I began, I, you know, in that time, you, you know, that's when I was beginning to see it, that it wasn't, um, you, you wasn't work, working in a, uh, uh, in a, an inclusive community, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, no, it makes a, a lot of sense. So you weren't inc- you weren't you didn't feel included, even though it was a subject which you were passionate about, you yeah, were yeah. good at, yeah. you weren't again being allowed to enter that community of practice, as it were. Yeah. You, yeah. you 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 still were an outsider. Very much so, very much so. And let's say the, and then that's when I started to uh, you know and uh, one time I went to a conf- went to a conference and then I got surrounded by all these African American mathematicians and I thought yes and then I said who, uh, who are you and I said we're the Congress of African American Research Mathematicians and then one of them says there is somebody of your passion and enthusiasm should do a PhD in mathematics because there are historical reasons why there are not many black mathematicians that get a PhD in mathematics so if yeah. you've got the talent you yeah. should go for it. And yeah. I thought, yes. So all empowered. And, you know, I, I, I went back to Birmingham, wrote up my application, uh, and got some, got two professors to do be my referee. Fantastic. And, yeah. You know, sent off my application. Within two weeks, I was invited for an interview at one of the universities in Birmingham. Yeah. Went there and went, went for, you know, went for the door and the, um, uh, spoke to the, you know, the professor looked at me and he says, Naira, you are technically weak and naive if you ever think that you can do a PhD in mathematics. And I thought, ah, oh. and I'm thinking, wait a minute. I remember what my teacher said to me, yeah? And here is a professor of mathematics. This is what he said, this is what he said to me. And also I'm just really remembering those, those you know, like the, the community, how, yeah. how it's not a, it's not welcoming, the environment is not welcoming. welcoming. Yeah. And I thought, that's it, me? Mathematics, done, finish. No more mathematics. Well, I'm not being doing no hobby. I'm not doing this as a hobby. I'm on study mathematics until the new place, which is which is where the environment is is corrosive. Yeah. I am doing that. Me, mathematics, finish, done. No more mathematics for me. Done. Did right. I mean? And my parents said, my, my dad said to me, Laura, you don't need anybody's permission to be a great mathematician. I said, look, I have to respect that. The professor says I can't be a mathematician. The teacher says I can't be a mathematician. That's it, done. Naira man, tell me, tell me, tell me, because I know the story doesn't end there. I know the story. Oh, okay, and the, the end, and that's how it, <laughs> and, and <then> it <laughs> I know the story doesn't end there. But what, what was, I don't even want to know what the grounds for that kind of crushing um, comment yeah. So w- w- what did you do? Because it it, it crushed you for a while, yeah. but it didn't crush you forever. So what happened? So what happened? So I'm, I'm done. You know, <coughs> my mathematics is no longer a hobby. It's mathematics is, do, is really done at the minimum. You know, yes, my job still involved mathematics, but that's uh, that's it. Okay, so a uh, number of years later, a number of years later, my, my son, uh, um, his four-year-old, goes off to Infant Junior School. Yeah, fair enough. Goes to Infant Junior School. Teacher guess says goes to Phil, uh, goes to my son and says, "What would you like to be when you uh, when when you uh, grow up? You know, become yeah. older." And my son goes, "I want to be a mathematician." And this is what the teacher said to to uh, to, to my son, my four year old son, "You will never be a mathematician, but you might grow up to become a singer." Oh. 
Oh my good. Right. So 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 let's let 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 let's picture this now. When you were at school, yep. and you went to the teacher at age 15, yep. right, and said to them, I want to be a mathematician, yep. right? You were told, um, you were told that the only thing that you should be looking for with a jawline like yours is yep. to go in to become a boxer, yep. right? An entertainer. Yep. Now, your son, yep. I'm not going to guess how many years later, but let's say 20 years later, Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In that ball, ballpark figure, right? Your son says the same, effectively the same thing that you had said that I yeah. want to be a mathematician. Yeah. Twenty years later, different teacher, and yeah. they turn around and say to him, "You could be a singer, but yeah. you can't be a mathematician." Yep. Yeah. What did that make? How did that make you feel? I was livid. I was livid. I wanted to go to that school and give that teacher a piece of my mind. Do you know what I'm mm. thinking? That's a four-year-old. That is a four-year-old. Even How can you be telling a four-year-old what they cannot be? Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Mm-hmm. The, 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 what was that oyster? Do, do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. And then, um, then, um, I, then uh, I thought, then I stopped and I'm thinking, oh, wait a minute. Isn't, isn't this my fault? Because I've wanted to be a mathematician and people have said their opinions and I've given up on my dreams. How can I be a role model to my son? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. How can Mm -hmm. I say to my son, yeah, don't worry about it. Go for it. I'm thinking, Mm -hmm. but I stopped, you know, I stopped. How can I be a role model to my son? And then I remember what my dad said. Mm -hmm. You don't need anybody's permission to be a great mathematician. mathematician. Yeah. And I'm thinking, Dad, you are absolutely completely right. Mm-hmm. You don't need anybody's permission to be a great mathematician. So I thought, right, from this day on, from this day forth, I'm going for it. No more limitations, no more selling myself short. Mm-hmm. No more holding myself back. Mm-hmm. You just keep on moving forward mm-hmm. and forward mm-hmm. and forward. You don't need anybody's permission to, to be, be a, a great mathematician. mathematician. No, no, I, 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 I love that statement. And the more that you say it, it's the more I love that statement. And with the story behind it, um, the story behind it just reinforces the resilience that you've had to have in order to get to where you are now. Because I'm just wary of time because there's so much which I want to pull out. But just in terms of, because (coughs) what's the next stage of the story? Because now that you've got your passion back, right? What did you do? How did you set about making the transformation of who you were? Well, there are there are things that I needed to do. Mm-hmm. One, I had to be a professional mathematician, not somebody a mathematician working in, in the background, a mathematician working in the for, in, in the foreground. So, what I I went for a job where I became a mathematical modeling consultant, right. and and with that, um, I go to places and because what I did remember from my past, I remember saying. Uh, in the previous jobs where I was, I was an analyst, I said, oh, I think you can solve this mathematically. And people said, no, there are things you cannot solve using mathematics. And I said, oh, okay, then I used to believe them. Now, I don't believe them. I said, I think I can solve this mathematically. No, you can't. I said, yes, I can. And you go ahead and you solve it using mathematics. Did I mean? So it was a case of, I used to go after problems that people think was impossible. You know, the hardest problems, that's the problems I went for, you yeah. know, and I was getting a reputation of the mathematician that would solve real world problems. You know, I would run up and down Europe solving real world problems. That was, that was, uh, so that was number one. So it's, that was number one, being a, a mathematical, being a consultant, a mathematical consultant. Yeah, yeah. that's number one. So doing the problems that people think was impossible to do and getting, and, and yeah. Point number two was a PhD, was to, mm-hmm. to, to uh, find, a, a supervisor and a university that would actually say, yeah, we will have you, uh, you know, 
you know we'll have you as a as a PhD uh, as a PhD student do this uh, do this PhD and um, so so there's two things in parallel working as a mathematical consultant I'm doing a part-time PhD um, that's and that was my that was my um, that was my journey and then um, and so yes I was work, working in let's say the aerospace automotive and then engineering doing all this mathematics but also just doing my doing my PhD and then come come by the end of my PhD so I got I got my PhD for yeah you got my PhD a couple a couple of days later the science council um uh, made a list of the top 100 practicing scientists in the UK and I was named as as one of them and they had That's me down cool. they they cited me as being um uh somebody that developed um, mathematical modeling uh, applications to solve industrial problems. I thought, yeah, okay, I like that. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened. And then, then six, then six months later, I got in contact um, a organisation that runs the, the book called the Who's Who. Yeah. They got in contact with me. Mm -hmm. Who's Who's been around since eighteen forty nine. Now, uh, if you are somebody that reaches the top of your profession or influence, uh, you get into the Who's Who. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, once you get in the Who's Who, you remain in the Who's Who each year until you pass away, and you get into yeah. another book called who was who. Yeah. Now, in 2015, there were about 30,000 entries in the who's who, of which there were only 30 mathematicians. And it's just a concept in 2015, I became the first black mathematician to get into the who's who. Uh, so, you know, since 1845, I thought, all good. So, and I thought, uh, I thought, okay, all good. So there's there's me. So I got my PhD thinking, yeah, there's not many black mathematicians that get PhDs in mathematics. I got my PhD. Yeah, cool. I'm a, I'm a mathematical modeling consultant, reputation, reputation of solving real world problems. All good. Fair enough. I've got you know, the top 100 scientists. Yeah, all good. Um, uh, got in the who's who, first black mathematician in the who's who. All good. Right. My mission is now over. Right? No. Wrong. <laughs> 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 now, uh, there was a a, um, uh, a, a, a black mathematician um, in South Africa named Professor um, 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 Gephi Van King, who was the first um, black female South African to get a PhD in mathematical education. And then she came up with this, this quote. She said this, being a first isn't something to be proud of, but it is a calling to ensure that one isn't the last. I say again, being a first is it something to be proud of, but it is a calling to ensure that one isn't the last. So there's me walking around thinking, yeah, yeah. I'm the first black mathematician to get into who's who. Yeah. 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 So and then you suddenly so realization, do you realize that you're the last? Okay. Yeah. So what are you gonna do about it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, I I love that saying too. So basically she's challenging you to say, just because you're the first one, you can't just sit on your laurels and just accept it yeah. you need to bring others on yeah okay so so tell i'm just wary of time because normally I'm, I'm guys if you've got questions that you'd like to ask put your hands up and in a few minutes i'll, I'll bring you in but um this conversation is is just too rich at the moment and I'm, I'm coming to you guys i'm coming to you right <laughs> so tell me right Paige already put her hand up one minute pay one minute right um in terms of that whole notion of not being the last, just because you were the first, you could also be the last if you don't do something. What is it that you then chose to do to 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 engender to make sure others are coming through? Well, I did um, I did a, a number of number of things, but the if I just focus on the principal thing that I did do was. Yeah. Um, um, so there was like a rumor around 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 2015 of this new film called Hidden Figures. Uh, yeah. I was reading it. I've Hidden Figures. Oh, Captain Johnson, really? That's that's interesting. And then I got to the notion, of thinking, but wait a minute. Uh, this is about three African American mathematicians who have been hidden. And I was wondering, I wonder if these are the only ones that have been hidden. I wonder if there are uh, are there any more? Yeah, there's, there's there's more. Are there more hidden figures out there? Mm -hmm. And so I went to, um, you know, October being Black History Month. So I went to all these different Black History Month events and thinking, okay, well, if I'm going to find Black mathematicians, surely I'm going to find it at Black History Month events. Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, uh, I went for one event and I went to the next event and the next event. And then I kept on seeing, you know, Beyonce and Beyonce and Beyonce. Oh, 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 oh. I kept on seeing Beyonce. And so I challenged them. I said, look, look. 
Why am I keeping seeing Beyonce and Beyonce, Beyonce? Come on, where, where are the black scientists? Where are the black engineers? You know, and in my point of view, where are the black mathematicians? Come on, yeah. come on, come yeah. on. What, what, yeah. what, you know, like, look, look, no disrespect to what you're seeing, but yeah. I'm not seeing this. Yeah. yeah. And they said to, you know, one of the organizations said to me, says, look, look, no, no, we don't know anything about mathematics. We don't know anything about uh, black mathematicians you're a black mathematician you help us you help us yeah so oh, it's another challenge so one of the things i did do uh in my a levels is that not only did I do i do a level mathematics i did a level history so right. i was good at going in and doing yeah. doing, doing, the, doing the research mm -hmm. so i went in and did the, did the research and what i did is i created a a social media poster called the black heroes of mathematics mm -hmm. which i actually did de you know detailed some you know prominent you know, Black heroes of mathematics. Yeah. Put that on Twitter. You did right. It was just, it was just amazing. The the response from the mathematics community were like, it was like the response. One response was like saying this: "I I I feel so ashamed. I didn't know nothing about these these black mathematicians. I thought and then um, and then oh, it, it's uh, and so I was getting positive things from the black community, but I was really getting real traction from the math from the mathematics community, thinking." Hello, yeah. and then and then uh, he went on to becoming a, a, a turned the poster into a talk called the Black Heroes of Mathematics, wow. where I actually mixed my testimony mm -hmm. and I talked about the the, the Black Heroes of Mathematics, and I saw the response on the face. Like at the end of the talk, you saw the people and like the jaws like, yeah, you know, yeah. and then um, and then 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 the significant thing that happened was um. You know, last year was George Floyd. Yeah, and yeah. You had like all this response, and all corporations say, "Oh, yeah. what we're we going to do? What we're we going to do?" Now I had yeah. different people, different mathematical societies, because I was then president of the IMA, yeah. and I had as a president, so I was a mathematical so UK uh, society's come up to me and says, "Look, how can we actually respond to this? What can we do as a mass community?" And I said, "Well, mm, how about we do a conference? But let's call this conference Black Heroes of Mathematics. And what we're going to do? We're going to get inspirational blacks." mathematicians from around the world yeah. who would do talks virtually and they will do like a mixture of testimony and a technical talks do you know yeah. what i mean yeah and and they said Ooh. and then so we said so we uh, you know last october a year last yeah. october we did it the response to it was amazing Fantastic. and then and then and then we repeated the the conference again uh just just you know october just gone yeah. we had sort of like 700 delegates from 70 different countries wow do you know what I mean? yeah you know and you, and you just see these, just as these, you had these, like say, these, these mathematicians, you know, and you see their passion. I think it's like these black heroes, these black heroes, they don't necessarily know each other, but yeah. actually getting them all together yeah. and then doing the thing. And then we have like, yeah. a panel discussion and it's just really electric. electric you know, yeah. you've just seen yeah. these black people being passionate about mathematics and making, and in their own fields, they're making a, they're making a contribution. And it was just an amazing, and it's, and it's something, um, you know, it's, it's something that's going to be sustainable. It's going to go on and on and on and on, mm -hmm. you know. And, and we've got, uh, you've, we've, we've changed, the, the, the mass community has changed from the way I described it as being... An inclusive. To, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, so that was, that is, let's say, just one, that's probably one of the major aspects, but that's what's touched things uh, internationally, you know, the yeah. Black Heroes of Mathematical Conference. It's, it's now, it's a brand, and it's like, yeah. everybody's saying, oh, we want to see this for next year, and uh, where we going? It's, yeah. And like, I chair it, you know, yeah. no doubt, more than likely, I'll, I'll probably chair it again next year, but, yeah. uh, you know, hey, hey, ho. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. And that, that's, that really is inspirational, right? And it's a, it's a, very valuable thing which is being done there. I'm going to bring Pei in. Um, Pei, you had your hand up. So if you want to give your question to um, Naira, please. Hi, Naira. Um, I'm a Birmingham girl, uh, okay. based in Birmingham, work in London. And it's so good to see someone like you who's, you know, Birmingham raised and doing so well, especially in STEM. So that makes me so happy. Um, my question to you is, well, okay, it's a two-part question. Firstly, has anyone ever dismissed your capabilities because you're from, you know, the West Midlands? And what are you proud about, uh, most proud of about being, <coughs> being from Birmingham? So, well, well, 
you know, when I, when anybody uh, dismissed me from the from the West Midlands, especially with my accent, you know, I usually say this to them: Do you realise that Shakespeare spoke with a Brummy accent? So I'm the closest thing here to Shakespeare. All right. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? So, uh, uh, but I mean, have, uh, has anybody dismissed me from being 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 from the West Midlands? Uh, if if they have, I've really noticed it because I mean, I've I've got this. You know, when I said this this whole idea, you don't need anybody's permission to be a great mathematician. Not only does that apply, when I've never done that talk. That, you know, it's, you know, I'm I am coming from the black perspective, but this could be applied to anybody. And I remember doing this talk at uh, at a, a theatre down in London, and I had this. This lady come up to me and she was saying, look, uh, okay, you, you, you know, I'm a, and it's just this white lady. She comes up to me and she says, listen, I know that you're talking about black people, but guess what? I'm autistic. And what you just said there spoke to me, you know, it spoke to me. So, you know, that message, that, that message is not only, you know, yes, it's come from a, you know, it's, it's come from this perspective. However, it can be applied to anybody and everybody and, and including this, this whole idea that you know let's say you're in the western and you've got a brummy accent and you you're working in a place full of people that, that got some some uh, southern accents no guess what your your, your accent yeah your accent your experience is an asset yeah there are things that you know that you bring to the table that that they that they don't that they that they don't know so away we go you know we got some we got some great people that come from Birmingham Birmingham was was the in this country was the was the center of the industrial revolution so where you know where would they be so please you know you've got you want to take in if you want to uh, have a go at people from Birmingham then give up your car and start walk start walking and, and, and don't use anything that is of, of any, anything industri industrial and start living in a cave that's what you need to say to them <laughs> That is so good. I love how you rep in Birmingham because we, we need that so much. And then also the next bit is what are you most proud of as well? I think you kind of covered it, but if you just sum it up, what are you most proud of about being a Birmingham? Oh, uh, what I've, I mean, what I'm most proud of, uh, okay, what I'd be most proud about about being Birmingham, Aston Villa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, fair enough. <laughs> Thank you, Nara. No problems. That's brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> no, that's, that's absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I can see that you've done so, so much in terms of from that point where, where that tipping point where your son was, was told he would be. Can your son sing? Does he sing well? Uh, well, OK, I can tell you what my son is doing now. Yeah. Um, see, see, my son right now, he's um, he's doing a, a game arts uh, a degree where he's right. doing let's say doing all this modeling of let's say landscape and and then equipments and cars and yeah. doing all this so, so so that so if we have to say um a singer you know is it you know is he an out and out mathematician no but the things that he's using is he's using mathematical modeling tools to draw landscapes right. and yeah. so so you could one can argue that he's much more closer to being a mathematician than being a singer, singer, did I mean? Yeah. I know, yeah. like I said, one time he, he sent me a um, uh, a, a picture of uh, of his uh, assignment where he was he was actually designing and drawing the outline of a porch to be put into a to be put into a game. Now, mm -hmm. all that was to do is, you know, it, it looked like finite element and finite element to those who are of the engineering thinking. Well, that is that is very mathematical. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah. So, yeah. yeah, so is he a is he a singer? No, you know, no. have I heard him sing? No. But, uh, <laughs> See, I, 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 I'm not even going to go back down to that route. But yeah. that trigger has has was the trigger that you needed to pursue the excellence which you had seen as a young boy when you was watching the West Indian cricket team. That yeah. adversity which they had and many people from the from the West Indian and black communities and other communities had faced in the 60s and 70s when you were seeing that pattern being repeated from yourself and then for your son you chose to do something different not to accept the label for yourself or for your son and you've developed these programs of activity which actually highlight the brilliance the excellence, the black heroes of mathematics, you know, and I, I, I love that. I, you, you're a doer. You're not one to sit back and say, you know, someone else can do that. Um, and I, I really love that. I think it's a very inspirational story. 
and um, not story, the activities which you've done. I'm going to ask you one final question, all right? Um, and that question is it's kind of like two parts. Well, uh, what would you say to your, or what advice would you have given to your 16 year old self? What advice would you have given, apart from the fact that your dad gave you that seriously good bit of advice, but what advice would you have given now, looking back, what advice would you give your 16 year old self after being told you need to be a boxer? Well, um, you know, I presume it would be the 16 year old who then listened to his, uh, heard what my dad's actually said. <laughs> and, uh, what I would have said to, you know, if I had got into like say a, a time machine, went back <laughs> and, and I got surprised again, hello, it's a guess. Uh, I like to, I like to say something to you. And I said, what I'd like to say to, to the 16 year old Naira, it says, you are of Jamaican descent, and in Jamaica, there's a word called Talawa. Now, Talawa means not to be underestimated, to be fear, uh, to be boldness. And that word, Talawa, you'll find it outside the Jamaican National Stadium. You have to see a picture of Usain Bolt, and you say, we are little, but we are Talawa. And I will say that, too, that's what I said to my 16-year-old self, I said, Talawa, yeah, not to be underestimated, Talawa. Fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. Naira, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on um, with us this, this afternoon. Um, and I agree with you. We're little, but we're Talawa. Right? It's absolutely brilliant. Um, I'm sure we're, our paths are going to cross again in the future, and I'm looking forward to that time. Um, I'm going to just <coughs> close off this session. And if anyone wants to stay behind and ask Naira a couple of questions afterwards, you can do. But let me just um, let people know what's going to be for our last session um, of the year. And so next week, we're going to have um, Dr. Julia McKende, who's a research associate in the Department of Infectious Diseases at Imperial College. And she's going to give us her insight as being as her journey into um, <coughs> infectious diseases and um, how she got there. But if you haven't seen any of the other um, belonging series, please go to our YouTube channel, which is tinyurl.com forward slash belonging dash IAO, where you can see other interviews, including this one, which we've just done with Naira. Um, so please um, have a good weekend, and I hope to see you again next week.